reason we are saved is to go and save others and the reason we are born is to reproduce and the reason we come into the kingdom is to reach out and bring other people into the kingdom we're going to reach every tribe we're going to reach every local government we're going to reach every community until every house will have the gospel every house will have the believer what's the work of evangelists how do you know an evangelist go preach and you join everything together you go to the market and preach you go to the school and preach you go to the college and preach you go to your community and preach you go to the village and preach you go to where those people are gathering and you preach that's the work of an evangelist i want you to write the word evangelist you know write it vertically down e for ezekiel hear the word from the mouth of the lord what did he tell us to tell them what did he tell them when he was here he said Except thou repay, thou shalt surely perish. And except you believe me, you cannot see life, you cannot have eternal life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not is condemned already. Hear the word at his mouth and give them warning from him. V is the voice in the wilderness, the voice in the wilderness. That's John, that's John. When you're warning the people, and when you tell them at the end of the life of sinning, there's going to be judgment. And if they're not going to be judged by the mighty power of the Lord and by the faithful, righteous judge of heaven and earth, they must repent today. That's the evangelist. They, the evangelist like Apollos, Apollos. These are people that know the scriptures and when they speak, they speak convincingly concerning Christ the savior there'll be no doubt in the heart of anyone when apollo stands up and then he preaches the word of christ and says christ is the savior and christ is the one their minds should not be here and there any other savior any other redeemer any other one that can bring me remission of sin no there's no other name there's no other savior any other place and therefore you want to develop yourself to preach and to speak convincingly like apollos and for nathan and for nathan an evangelist is talking to a sinner and the evangelist when you're talking to a sinner if you tell the sinner there are sinners in the world oh yes i know that i know that you know all these people are reading about them in the papers and you know they're corrupt they steal our money they do this and that anybody will agree with you there are sinners in the world there are wicked people in the world yeah, of course i know that in fact you know something they did to my daddy they did to my mommy my daddy should not have died now but you know wicked people and then you say there are drunkards there are smokers of course of course yes it is the evangelist that will bring the message home it's not just that they are sinners but you the one i'm talking to you are a sinner that's an evangelist and nathan said unto david tell me that watch the man. An evangelist is a good storyteller. It's a person that can take an illustration and then zero it in, and he says, Thou art the man. And she is for Gabriel. It's the evangelist that make this sinner to understand, make this woman to understand the way to life eternal and the way we can be saved and so the evangelist is like that giving us understanding you remember i said this same gabriel that came to mary and said hail mary and then you are blessed of all women and gave the message of the savior being born into the world he is for elijah the evangelist must get people out of their halting position out of their double-mindedness and make sure that it's not just either idol or jesus either my good works or what jesus Christ has done on the cross of calvary we must come to a decision that this is the way and this is the only way and elijah came unto all the people and said how long hold she between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if Baal, then follow him and the people answered him not a word that is convincing evangelist l is for luke 
hell is for look you see there are people that uh, that reach this highly pleased people and there are people that reach all these uh, you know sophisticated people all these political leaders political powers there are people that can reach them and we have to reach them we have to talk to them somebody has to rise up and go and talk to them and the people that have the great offices and the lock behind those offices somebody has to know how to knock at that door i is for isaac and the Lord sent him to go talk to the nation and to talk to them about how their sins can be forgiven, how they can be saved, how they can have assurance of salvation. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That's the evangelist right there. And call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And your righteous man is thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon and s is for stephen s is for stephen as we give them the gospel we're talking about the power the power of christ to save and the power of christ to heal and the power of christ to deliver and we say that jesus christ is still the same yesterday today and forever and what he did in this gone by is still able to do today and now we're looking at t for timothy but watch thou in all things your will watch and deal affliction you will endure do the work of an evangelist that's what you are going to do from today and this work will prosper in your hand you're going to speak to sinners and those sinners they're going to respond and they're going to repent in Jesus name do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry the Lord has called you and this calling will be effective and as you go you go with a mission as you go you go with the message as you go you go with the model before you understanding there is an ezekiel there was an ezekiel at that time i'm the ezekiel today there was a voice speaking in the wilderness at that time i'm that voice in my community today there was an apollos and i'm going to be that apollos here today there was a nathan i'm going to be like nathan there was an angel Gabriel and that quality of angel Gabriel making people to understand the way of the Lord I'm going to have that in Jesus name here comes Elijah I will sing give us another Elijah today somebody there another Elijah today I said somebody there another Elijah today and then you tell them what you hold him between two opinions if I does be the same then serve I does but look at what I does have been doing for you but if Jesus our Savior if Jesus our healer if Jesus our redeemer then follow him and multitudes through you will follow Jesus in his name and then you'll be like Luke you'll be like Isa like Stephen and like Timothy you'll be fruitful from this day if you have not experienced fruit before the period of fruit had now come in your life go and do the work of an evangelist go and be fruitful rise up now and let's talk to the lord in prayer seeing we are compassed about with great cloud of witnesses cloud of witnesses on evangelism personal evangelism we've seen how elijah preached We've seen the voice in the wilderness, John the Baptist. We've seen Apollos. We've seen Nathan. We've seen other character, Gabriel, even an angel, bearing witness to it. The question then is, are you evangelizing? How many souls have you won this year? I'm talking about pastor evangelism. Going into the buses, going into the boats, going into every highway, being available so that by the grace of God, the teeming multitude will not perish in hell. What are you doing? At this very time now, what are you doing? Somebody rightly said, the ass of the apostle wouldn't have been possible if the apostle did not go out. We are told, go ye into the world. Your place where you live, your residence, 
there are sinners there. In your family, there are sinners there. On the streets, there are sinners there. What are you doing? How many souls are you even inviting to the church? How many souls have you led to the Lord? The Lord is asking you, sin we are compassed about, we saw great a cloud of witnesses. These witnesses, they have lived and gone. What legacy are we leaving behind for the generations to come if Jesus tarries? What are you doing where you are? The little corner where you are? The little corner where you are? Are you not going to do something with that old man, old woman, near the grave, go to hell because you have not spoken to him, go. The question is go. Not just only talking with the words of mouth, action. It's what God is looking for. The difference between Jesus Christ, his disciples, and the scribes and the Pharisees is that the Pharisees and the scribes, they say, but they don't do. Until we go out, we cannot say we are obedient. Obedient children, God expects we go out everywhere we are. Start where you are today. Divine solution is coming again. How many will you take to the program? All past programs that have happened, divine connection, signs and wonders, what have you do? What did you do at that very time? God is giving us a clean slate now to do something new. Today is no judgment day, but don't die without obedience. Obedience is what God is looking for from every one of us. And the Lord expects we be obedient to Him in all things. In all things. When we talk about when we talk about holiness and heaven, holiness demands that we totally obey God. We do the will of God. For whosoever, who, uh, whosoever, whatsoever is commanded at all time is for our learning and for our example. The Lord is saying that if we know how to do good and we do it not, then we are sinners. Sinners will not make heaven. And the Lord expects that all the people around you, their blood will be required in your hand. Ezekiel said that the blood will be required in our hands if we don't witness. And Paul the apostle said, what is me if I preach not the gospel. Can we escape God's judgment if we don't have compassion, if we are not doing the will of God? It is not just words. God requires actions. Actions. The Bible was brought to us because believers of old, they went into action. And the Lord is saying, what doest thou? How seest thou? Are you not seeing sinners all around perishing? Are you not seeing how much you are trooping to him because we have not done our work? Pray and talk to the Lord. Pray and talk to the Lord. The sinners we refuse to reach now can constitute nuisance to us tomorrow. Some of them will become uh, terrorists. Some of them will become armed robbers. And all others, do we want to make this world uninhabitable for our children if we don't preach? When the evil men are growing worse and worse, the Lord is saying that something should be done. And by the grace of God, we are well able. You have the Spirit of God. You have the life of God. You have the Lord Jesus. And... Through them, we can do much for the Lord. Pray and talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord, action. Action, I be a man of action. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, I am asking, O oh Lord, that from today, we be men and women of actions. That, Lord, the Bible, heaven will be able to say, the ass of brother so-so-and-so, the art of sister so-so-and-so, because we did something to change the world. Lord, let that be a portion in Jesus' name. Grant every one of us, O oh Lord, more of your grace to do your will. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. H. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for our congregation at the headquarters. Thank you for all the congregations over the headquarters city here. In all the various districts and groups, thank you, Lord, for everyone in all the states, all the regions, all the nations of Africa and beyond. Lord, we pray that your spirit will enlighten us and show light in the world tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, the teaching of the word will bring transformation to our children. Transformation to our young people. Transformation to fathers and mothers, everyone, members and ministers in the church in Jesus' name. Keep us awake that your word will make definite impact in every life in Jesus' name. As we talk about the rapture, the coming of the Lord, we pray, Lord, you'll prepare everyone to be ready for that time. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody shout. That's not a shout. Everybody shout. God bless you. You can see that today we're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're studying from verse 51 all through to verse 58. Let's start with verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Here Paul, the apostle, by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, brings the word to the church at Corinth and to the church of the first century and to the church militant, the church triumphant, the church glorious from that time until this time and until the end of time. He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. What's a mystery? A mystery is something unknown by the past generation and is newly revealed. And this new revelation covered, hidden, unknown, and the people of the old generation, Old Testament, were ignorant of. Now the revelation comes and it becomes a mystery. And it says, I show you. I tell you, I declare to you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That is the pronouncement of death upon all the offspring of Adam. It's not going to take effect on everyone. There is going to be a generation of believers that will not sleep, that will not die, but they will be changed. And then it says in verse 52, it says in a moment,